there and it seems like it's right by the road. We can work our way up. Gotcha. Well, good, we, good. we will see you here in just about two seconds, hopefully. All right. All right, see ya. Bye. Bye. This him right here. You gotta be the right guy. Yeah. Um, yeah, where's the best place to park? Right up in here? All right, out here in Eastern Ohio, meeting the landowner, making a habitat plan today. Got Keith rolling with me, rocking the camera. Just got onto the guy's property here. Absolutely beautiful spring morning. So we're gonna get out, get out, get the boots all laced up and get to it. There you go. In the way you're out on this kind of like, it's like the last big point here. Mm -hmm. It's pretty, pretty legit. For the quantity of acreage you have, it's, I, I feel it's really well connected. Most importantly, um, I'd say just about anything. We're not gonna put any of this color ribbon on any good, nice trees. Okay. If we're marking like a little bedding area or a little clear cut we wanna make, we'll mark it on a tree that can be cut as well. Does that kind of make sense? Okay. There's those main species, there's only gonna be so many, so it's not a forever list, but a handful you're gonna to wanna to stay on. And right here, if you look, right to the, next to the privet is multiflora rose. There are some native roses, but not this guy. Getting this thing ribboned up for later. Start to get a plan to manage all that stuff. So this little bugger here is really guilty of doing just what the cool season grasses do. Taking over and kind of smothering. I mean, you can see there's just not a lot of diversity. Right. But Roundup, right now, you round up it. Because again, the key thing is this early in the spring, a lot of the native plants that are in this area, here's a pretty good example. Looks like some goldenrod. See how he's just starting to come up? You could have been out here two, three weeks ago if you wanted and sprayed right over this and that goldenrod was not up and growing. Just the reed canary, the reed canary grass and the cool season grasses. So that's that early spring window. It's really good for cleanups because when you convert it over, you get this cool season stuff out of here and the invasive stuff out. It's going to be a lot of wildflowers, forbs, but you got to really introduce this or it'll be a slow process for that to start popping up on its own. It will, but you can greatly speed up the process and like then you have your field, you got your forbs, you got you know, you've got fruit, you got seed, you got habitat. This gives you structure. Whitetails love getting next to. You put a big patch of that in a younger form, you know, three or four out there, pockets of it, they'll start to bed in right on top. That's something like a field of herbaceous material. It's not gonna offer woody brows. They like chewing on sticks and everything else, you know, all the, you picture, you've seen some deer brows on stuff yeah, before. Absolutely. But that's one I'm not gonna label it for right now. Um, you're gonna remember, I think, right as your dog yeah. would. Yo, that'll probably be, the blooms that are on this are insane giant white flowers, producing berries. Eyeball these, watch them. When they produce their little berries, you at least have a free native seed source. But what, what's not the one you don't want is see the multiflora rose in it. Okay. Yep, so that's one you could get down there and basil spray him. That, I like basil spray, you know, backpack sprayer wand, it's about this long. If you got this rose, you know, rose is pretty nasty guy. But with that wand, you can get that in there at the base of it and you don't have to fight it as much. March 15th is when I put on my phone that the, the multiflora rose was leafed out and all this native stuff was still dormant. So this rose in the bottom, see this guy right here? He's a little behind. Remember the one by the road, how it was a lot more leafed out? Yeah. Starting at like March March 15th, back in Southern Ohio, it was all leafed out. But the, this is by Burnham shrub, the red osier, for example, all the trees, all the wildflowers, completely dormant. That's the time when you can foliar spray. Say you had a wind blown into a hedgerow of this crap, and you just fog the whole row, drive out of there, go to a whole nother area. Huh. So that's how you can start to take a, you know, an area that's like nasty and tame it. And then you will only kill with glyphosate those ones that are leafed out, and that's your not native stuff. So then all of a sudden you let the dogwood go, you let the native shrubs go, and you didn't you know, smoke them. So I'll put all that in some you know, writing for you so you can kind of start to learn some of those tricks and then start to really apply it. So for deer, just real quick example, because this is common, but like this whole understory in here, it's not bad, it's a, a black hole, but if you want more herbaceous type stuff in here, oak leaves right here, how they're literally designed to be, these things carry fire beautifully. Not crazy, the wild forest, I mean, they can get tall, but if you're light and high and letting them burn downhill, and see how there's like a bunch of leaves laying at the base of that shrub? You do that in the dormant season, real safe controlled burn, it'll maybe top kill that shrub, and it'll make that shrub come back from a brand new start. That puts all that nutrients and forage right there at you know, level a lot of wildlife can utilize. This would be a spot where invasive control, equip, the tree thinning to start to cut this back, you can get an equip for that as well. Hmm. So to make some killer habitat, 
you utilize an eco to do that right here. Yeah, it's, it is just so different how what the woods look like there and here. Like yep. So much invasive, great vines. The whole plant Rose. understory, I mean, is night and day different. I mean, you got, it's just that extra moisture, really. But same deal, you're in here treating invasives. You can do um, grapevine control as well. And just start to kind of get control on some of those. Same deal, you got, you're gonna need that herbicide for something, so we'll figure out, do you attack this whole field first? Yeah. All right, so we just cruised up this slope. We were on this west side of the hill, pretty oak dominated, south facing. As we rounded the corner, we hit an east facing slope pretty noticeable change in the tree overstory as well as the understory. So the understory was a whole lot greener, it's more moisture, it's already all kinds of vegetation popping up. We also saw a lot more invasive pressure on that east side of the hill. So that's also pretty common. Um, those west, west and south slopes where you got the oak, it's a shallower soil, um, just it's not as um, productive. So you're not gonna see the same understory, but that's super common. We're up here on this big field on the top. Right here is just some native grass, it's called broom sedge. And we're getting into April here, about the second week of April, and most of this stuff is still dormant. So if you were to come out here and you're trying to get out stuff you don't want, this whole plant right here is still dormant. So you could use like glyphosate or Roundup to clean up. You could keep this structure and you're getting out stuff you don't want. This little bright green grass right here is cool season grass. So if you don't want that, that's gonna choke out things. You can spray him and release stuff like that. So this is an elm stump. This is pretty common. If you don't put herbicide, what you would expect is these sprouts like this to come off of it. This thing never got higher than a deer's face because this has actually been tested. The, the leaves off of elm stumps can be over like 20% protein. Yep. This time of year, it's just woody browse that they can eat on all winter. And they love to do that. But summertime, yeah, mid 20% protein levels just off those leaves. Pretty wild. But yeah. So you start thinning out some of your elms. Um, over it kind of goes that way. Okay. So this whole field edge, mm -hmm. if you can start to get it like this with down tree tops in it, that's where you want to be. Just, you got cover, this is food, right? So like down there, remember how bare it was on the mm -hmm. edge? Yep. More of this. And yep. you'll get more of this by cutting these trees, getting more sunlight in here. We saw all down that edge, there was blackberry, black raspberry. So, let's head down the spot here. See how there's the biggest maples in here? Mm -hmm. Leave those all for starters. Whittle out all these little guys and maybe treat some of them, maybe not. That's not a huge deal, but start with all the small ones. Leave some of the bigger ones so there's some shade, a little bit of shade. Otherwise, what'll happen is you get too much sun in here. Those oaks grow so slow, those seedlings, you're gonna get all these other tree species that are gonna explode gotcha. and outcompete the oaks. Makes sense. You need just enough sunlight to get the oak to actually regenerate and establish but not so much that everything's taken off. There's other tree species that love full sun. So if you go past that threshold, you're gonna, they're gonna overtake the whole cycle. The only way to really get that back or slow that down is herbicide, spot treating stuff out of the oaks that are trying to establish, or fire. Fire is by far the best way to go, but you can kind of prevent it by, you know, if it's a spot, you really want that oaks to regenerate. So don't go totally wide open sun. Just some food for thought, but yeah, this could be a cool little bench, little flat right here to have that young oak kind of patch. Deer love bedding in that, and it's also a food thing. So you'll start to get the green briar popping up. Um, there's a green briar right by your boot. Yep, uh, this guy right there. Yep, that's green briar. Uh, Keith's standing by some green briar right there. So what if you get this right and don't get too much sunlight, you'll start to have oak seedlings and green briar covering gotcha. this whole thing. Big thicket of green briar down here. This right here is a sugar maple. Zooming right over here. This right here is a red maple. Both growing where, zoom over that oak stump there, Keith. So these guys were growing underneath that big oak back in the day, and after they took that out, you know, no one's really done any management since, so these maples are filling in the canopy. So we're gonna try to start to reverse that a little bit. We still have a couple nice white oaks back over my shoulder that could work as a seed source to get some regeneration going back in this spot. giving me some ideas and some stuff that can make, um, you know, can happen kind of quickly. You know, again, with some of the edge feathering, with having a targeted area down here, you know, to kind of thin out 
some of the smaller uh, oaks and in the maple and and things like that i'm pretty confident there's a lot of stuff that i i can do mm -hmm. um so from that perspective like i said it that's it feels good to get that that knowledge and, and to know that you can come in and make a make a pretty quick impact on stuff again kind of probably having some short medium and long-term goals you know it's not all going to get done this year yeah um i've yeah. realized that but yeah. you've given me a list of things that you know, can have a high return pretty minimal yeah. input to some degree i mean all righty thanks keith for coming with us up and set everything up yeah let's get this thing loaded so just finished up laying out this pretty cool large food plot. This guy does a lot of deer hunting. So getting that laid out and the placement of it, Keith and I had talked about what we wanted that to look like coming down here looking on maps. And I think we ended up, spot we marked for a shooting house for him. We're, all, we're probably 20 yards from the original pin. Kind of modified the shape a little bit. And we got him set up for about an acre and a half. He's gonna try to have him cool season forage. So brassicas, winter wheat, winter rye, clovers, that kind of thing. Um, out in this field in general, the biggest thing he's got to do, and a lot of different people were in a real similar boat, cool season grass control. It's super early spring. And we're gonna get this field converted over to primarily just native vegetation. That's gonna get tall cover in this field, right, like right behind me. You can see kind of back on the power line behind me over there. That's, more, that's what we're trying to get going on up in this field. He's got like a 15 acre field he's working with around this food plot area. So we're trying to convert all this turkey nesting, deer fawning, fall deer cover, get some shrubs planted out here, start to get a lot of diversity and just a diversity in structure that's present too. So we're gonna change the composition drastically by altering the cool season grass, getting that out of here, but long-term trying to create as much diversity in structure. So maybe some scattered tree plantings, little pockets of trees, pockets of shrubs. So that's kind of the gist of up here. We got them some timber stand improvement units laid out. We got some invasive units laid out as well. Just different situations going on there. Pretty awesome day. I think Keith and I are both super whooped. So we're gonna get loaded up. We're almost all the way out here by Pennsylvania. We're headed back to central Ohio. Probably look for a Dairy Queen or something on the way back. Yes, Dairy Queen, or I think it's the hot dog stand. Hot dog, hot dog, stand. hot dog stand and malts is the local intel we have, so. Let's do it. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you need some help laying out projects like this on your property, get a hold of us on nativelandscapesohio.com. Check out the consulting tab. If you'd like to have us out, hit us up there in the contact section. We also can help you out with these projects if you want to get some of this work done. We got a good sized crew. We work here in state in Ohio with about a four or five man crew traveling around the state doing habitat projects. While you're on the website, if you're there, be sure to check out some of the merchandise. We just got our shop up and running. Pretty cool, keep it native hat, little wildflower in the middle, designed by Keith. Got a couple different hat patterns, really quality hats, I'm wearing one right now, they're super comfortable. Got like a non-camo version there as well. We're gonna add some different colors for the ladies here soon too. We also got some cool stickers, keep it native uh, car bumper stickers. Got like four different colors, pink, yellow, those can all go on your car window if you wanna represent the native plants. And uh, you can also stick them on water bottles, stuff like that. So once again, we appreciate you tuning in. We'll see you on the next video.